question comes via Skype and it's from Joanna Maidment in Surrey Hills, Victoria. Hi. Considering the pivotal matriarchal role Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander women play within their families and communities, shouldn't their disproportional incarceration rates be considered the most pressing feminist issue facing our society today? Okay, I'm going to throw that to you, Linda Burney. Um, look, thank you for that question. Uh, the rates of incarceration of Aboriginal women, uh, young Aboriginal people and Aboriginal men in this country are an outrage. Um, and I think everyone would accept that. Uh, you can't be uh, a, a tiny percent of the population to 4% of the population and yet be over 50% of the incarceration rate. And in the case of women, over 80%. Um, in some parts of Australia, it is 100%. Now, we all have to ask ourselves, how can this be? And when you have a look at the role of Aboriginal women in the community, in local organisations and in homes as the matriarchs, uh, you wonder how those two things can coexist in a country. Uh, the answer to, uh, to the question is incredibly complex. Um, and uh, I won't, we don't have time to go into it now, except to say that there needs to be recognition that this is the current situation, it's unacceptable, and what needs to change are a whole range of, um, of, of drivers that will change that incarceration rate. Karen, it's odd, isn't it, that we sit here having arguments about quotas in Parliament and the representation of women, ignoring the fact that we are here on a continent that has tens and tens of thousands of years' worth of history of a strong matriarchy. How much is this questioner's concern a concern for the federal government? Look, I, I think it's, it's clearly a, a big concern, and I thank you for the question. I mean, even just sitting here listening to Linda go through the statistics, it's a wake-up call for all of us. Now, I'm sure there are some solutions out there, but uh, what we need to make sure that we're doing is instead of just um, sitting back in an ivory tower talking about what the solution should be, we actually need to listen to those who understand the extent of the issues and come up with some solutions that are going to deal with the issues in the short, medium and the longer term. Well, who's not being listened to now that should be listened to? Well, I think that, that uh, there's obviously a breakdown somewhere along the line because if we as a government and previous governments had actually listened, we should surely have been much further down the path of coming up with what that solution is going to, to be. And we clearly don't have a solution for it. So I would say we need to listen. We need to take advice. We need to work out what the solution is going to be, not just sit back and allow um, a situation that is clearly unacceptable to continue. Nicole, I wanted to bring you in briefly because there's a really strong relationship that the AFL plays with... Um, bringing Aboriginal boys into the sport as a way of um, reintroducing them to the education system. Given the explosion in women's footy, yeah. is there a similar program for Aboriginal girls? We are seeing more and more girls and women play football. There's half a million uh, in this country that uh, are female and play football, which is fantastic. Aussie rules football. Um, we are. Uh, we only have a very small number of Indigenous football players in the AFLW, so it's something that we do need to focus on to be able to attract more girls to want to play elite football. But what we also need to do is to make sure that when they do come to AFLW, um, quite often often they have to leave their families, leave their communities. So what we need to do is make sure that it is actually a positive experience for them. It's one that they feel comfortable with. Um, so from our point of view, we do need to do some work on that. We have great programs right around the country. The Adelaide Crows have just started an Indigenous Academy uh, and Bronwyn Davey is coaching that, an Indigenous footballer herself. Uh, so And Kate York House is another one that we are investing in, along with a collaboration with government and local footy uh, and local council. So those kind of programs are very, very important. Important. But I think it's also um, how new AFLW is. We can actually learn from mistakes that have been um, that have happened um, with AFL and from other sports as well as to how we can actually make it better. What sort of mistakes? Oh, just in terms of um, bringing Indigenous players um, into clubs without having the right support networks around them, so that they they don't they don't um, uh, thrive, they don't succeed. The last thing that I would want to do is to bring an Indigenous footballer into the AFLW for them to fail. 
I want to make sure that they have a positive experience and one that can actually assist their families as well. We have employment programs. Um, we've had our first Indigenous player, uh, Delma Disu, who is working for uh, one of our hotel chains. So to be able to have that kind of benefit that also helps her family is really important for us to look from a holistic point of view.